squiggly. Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. Gosh, I've got some fluffy COVID hair. Just, I just noticed that's kind of scary. Do this episode like this to block it. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, we are going to be doing a two-part series starting today. Uh, the episodes are JL171 and JL172. You can just use JL171. That'll take you to the cart. We're going to be doing oil painting studies, but we're going to be taking all that information we've been learning about warm and cool colors and primaries and mixing and, and putting it all into these next two episodes where you guys are going to be doing studies. Now, what studies are, are something that most of us don't like to do. They're practice. And um, practice is not a four-letter word, notice, from the, from the letter count. But it kind of feels like it to most people. Now, what that does for you, though, when you break it down and you do studies, and it's a good thing to get in the habit of, as annoying as it is, is it gives you some alternate ways of looking at the same subject before you take all that time to do a finished work where you, you know, get part way into it and you're really invested in it and you know something doesn't look right or the colors are off, but you're not sure, but you're already like 50% there. So you just don't want to stop. And then once the work is finished, you still don't like it, right? It's happened to all of us. It's happened to me. So the best thing you can do for yourself ahead of time very quickly are to play with some color studies for what you're kind of considering doing. Even maybe sometimes to take a work and give it um, some sense of feeling uh, for the temperature of the work. If you're wanting something to look just angry or hostile or something like that, you're probably going to go with warm colors, more along the reds or red violets or oranges. If you want something that's kind of cool, whether it's relaxing, whether it's supposed to be maybe, you know, showed maybe a feeling of melancholy, depression, what have you, you're going to err on the cooler color side. So it's a way of experimenting with colors to get a mood that you want as well as just working out some color schemes for an actual artwork. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. Now, when I set this up, I said that everybody would be doing three studies within that to show time. I'm going to do, well, Katie looks serious for a minute. I wasn't sure if she was asking me a question. I'm going to be doing six. Now, what I'm going to be doing as we do each of those three for you guys is I'm going to show you two alternates to uh, to what I'm doing. So if I, I say that we're going to be doing um, like uh, uh, red and green, so we're doing complementary colors, I'm going to do one that's much warmer on one side and one that's much cooler on the other side. So you can see with me doing it, the big difference between the two. You can pick whichever one you want to play with and you can do that and I'll try to work on both at the same time so you guys can see what it is that I'm talking about and so if you're doing one and not the other you're not stuck waiting while I work on the one that other people have chosen okay so um so the episode to see the colors that we're using you can use I mean watercolors and paper you can use acrylics you can use oils but you really need the warm and the cool colors. So if you go to our website, jerrysordorama.com, you type in JL171, that will take you to the list of colors that we're gonna be using, and I'm gonna quickly go through them. And I know this is gonna take a little longer today. Next week, we'll be starting right into wherever we left off, but it's just so you know exactly what is going on. You're prepared before we, before we do this. So instead of black, because we all know I don't like the use of black. We're gonna be using Van Dyke Brown if we need to darken something. If we can't get it dark enough with the colors that we're using in our um, kind of array that we've got here, we're gonna be using Titanium White. These are all Lucas 1862, by the way, but you can use whatever brand you've got available. Um, Magenta Red, which is a primary red. I don't like when people use that as a primary because then you're set with it being very specific. I prefer um, warm and cool primaries and that's why we're doing this so we can talk about that as it goes, but that's one, one of the colors. Um, we're going to be using permanent red. 
cadmium yellow, a lemon yellow primary, phthalo blue, the ultramarine blue, and yellow ochre. Okay. So those are going to be all the ones that we're going to be using for this. Um, I'm using the Da Vinci Pro panels. It's a five by seven. Um, it's an ultra smooth, already gessoed panel. Um, it's just for the ease of, it's kind of easier for me to handle when something's wet because it's it's got those sides to it, but it's not with, with me doing it in a flat format so you guys can see looking down, this is better for me to be kind of pushing on than a stretched canvas would be that's going to have some give. I prefer to use stretched canvas where it's in an easel um, so it's not kind of stretching that cotton. We've got, um, I think I put the Pro Stroke set of, of I think there's six brushes. Um, they are a premium hog bristle. There's all sorts of different shapes and sizes. We're obviously not going to be using the big giant one because that's a little overkill for what we've got. I mean, you knock yourself out if you want to use it, but I don't think we need to get quite that large. So wash the sizing out of it. If you got these and you haven't already, do that before we get started. Um, so you're not crunching your brush. Um, in the uh, Jerry's Art Arama Facebook group, we have posted the picture. I posted the picture um, last night that we're going to be doing. I just chose a monochromatic coffee mug, something that's simple. I don't care if this looks like it's been stepped on in your drawing. This is a study. We're worrying about learning about color. We're not worrying about whether this actually has all the right angles and the ellipses and all that stuff. So, so don't sweat a basic line drawing for this. Just get some lines down and focus more on the paint, okay? Um, so that's what we're gonna be using. That'll be here so you'll be able to see it as we go. I think the girls are gonna be posting it, are they, Katie, in the chat? So that if somebody did not see that or they're not part of the group, they can snag that and print it out. Um, and then I've just got some palette paper got some tape to keep stuff from moving around and um, I think we're ready to go. I think we've covered all the items that we have. Uh, you can use a table easel if you want for either your panels or your, um, your little printout. Palette paper of your choice or a palette, that's fine. A container of solvent, your choice. Again, um, some rags or cloth, which you know what, that's the one thing that I thought I had. Oh. It's always there, Katie. He always cover, got me covered. All right. So um, I think we're ready to get started. Do we need to say a shout out for virtual AOC real quick, Katie? Okay, so Art of the Carolinas canceled this year just because of, well, COVID. So, uh, but never fear, we're going to try a virtual AOC. And actually, um, on October 27th, uh, Sharon Julio and I just got this all ironed out. She's going to be coming. Um, I've heard a lot of people mention, um, I've seen it in the group and, and some other people have talked to me about it as well, that they're worried about what can you really cover in a three hour workshop. Well, believe me, I've taught only three hour workshops at AOC and you are exhausted at the end of it because when you come in my workshops, you're going to work. Um, but with virtual, you've got an added kind of, I think, bonus in that um, you can see the artist that's instructing you, demo it right there in front of you, and you can actually be sitting, working on it yourself, step by step along with them. So you're going to get more instruction out of it than most people at AOC will lecture. You come up and you're gathered around their table and you watch, then you're trying to remember that information when you take it and you actually go sit down in your seat. So that's something that I think is, is going to be super beneficial to this virtual um, AOC this year. And, um, and we've got a great array of classes, but Sharon's going to join us. And then if people have questions about AOC and how the virtual AOC is going to work, they can ask them. But we're going to be doing a free virtual mini AOC workshop um, through Jerry's Live. And it's going to be on jelly printing. So that's going to be fun. Um, so that will be October 27th. So if you've got questions about AOC, and you're still not sure about it, you can save them for that day and hear right from the horse's mouth with Sharon visiting us. Okay. And for those of you that weren't 
didn't catch the website, it's uh, www.artofthecarolinas.com. Okay. All right. Is that, that good? Are we all ready to go? Okay. So, um, so this is how we're going to do this. We're going to, I think it's really important that people understand the power of a complementary color scheme. And I think that using this kind of idea for these studies is going to make it a little easier for you to see what I'm talking about with warm and cool colors. Um, just because it's, it, it seems like red should be red and yellow should be yellow and it's not. So, um, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to kind of harness those colors and go from there. So I think what we'll do first and with the beauty of the primaries, we're going to have to mix one of these complementaries, right? Whether it's green, whether it's violet, whether it's orange. Um, Katie, give us complementary colors to, to start. Just throw it out there because I can't decide. I don't know, but blue or something. Blue, okay, well, so then we're doing orange, right? Yep. Blue and orange, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, purple and yeah, no, blue and orange. Okay. Final answer, blue and orange. Blue and orange. We're doing blue and orange. That was actually what I was thinking at first. Okay, so I've got a phthalo blue. We're gonna do I love a the cool over here, and we're gonna do the warm over here, which I guess is gonna be backwards for, well no because they're gonna be looking down okay so in fact you know what um can you see right along this edge here if i write cool and warm H hit me with the above camera okay all right so i'm gonna slide this up a little and i'm gonna write cool so if you guys come back and look at this later and you're like what in the world this room climate is crazy it's the temperature of your paint okay so, um, so that means phthalo is more of a, this is a more greenish blue, which is cooler, okay? Ultramarine blue tends to be a more violety blue, which pushes it towards the warm side because violet, you're starting to get ease back into those hot colors again, all right? So we're going to put that one there. So you're going to be able to pick which one you want to do with this. Okay, this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky because we're going to be mixing an orange for ourselves. Okay, so I've got a permanent red and a magenta red primary. Magenta red primary is typically, depending on the manufacturer, this is a PV23, so that's a pigment violet. Okay, so that's going to be our warmer red. Okay, the permanent red is PR255, which tends to be more on the orangey side okay so we're gonna put that by the cool we're gonna put the magenta red by the warm okay and the same with our yellows our lemon yellow primary tends to be more of in fact let's um do we have more of these panels let me grab another panel we're gonna show these real fast just because i think that's gonna make more sense don't you think mm -hmm. okay So this is our phthalo blue. That's gonna be cooler. And you know what? I'm gonna squirt this out as long as I'm up here. And yes, it, it may be a more exorbitant amount of paint than we need. It's just easier for me to be, be able to see to work. What? I got flipped in it, Israel. Okay. And here is our ultramarine blue. Okay. So those are our cooler colors. Just a little bit of thinner. It's hard to see until you really get. Um, sorry, just dump salt in all of my hands. Until you really get in kind of this area, you can see that little bit of green undertone. See how much more violety that is by comparison, right? Really has a more red to it, more green to it. Okay. Now, by the same token, let's take these colors, our lemon yellow, which I said is a little bit more green. And 
and our permanent red. This guy didn't get burped. All right, there we go. All right, so let's get another, just in case there's a trace bit of blue in there. See how that's really greeny? It's really bright, like screaming yellow, right? And this for our red thinned is a lot more of a reddish orange, right? Or almost like a scarlet. Scarlet's always kind of that, has that orangey undertone. All right, so in contrast, we have our cad yellow. See how much more sunshiny yellow that is? Right, kind of a sunflower yellow, right? I guess is the, the term that I'm... And then there is our magenta primary. way more violety, right? See the big difference? That's really, once you see that, that's super orange, isn't it? And then that's that super deeper yellow, right? So do the temperatures make sense? Can people, can, is everybody, just to have them holler, yes, if that's the case. Hopefully, with them side by side like this, it's going to be much more apparent. It's just going to be me making sure that I keep my brush clean enough where I'm not transferring it back and forth. Okay, so when I go to make the orange for this, That red is very strong. Let's get some more yellow. Okay, so there's a really nice, kind of much softer, paler orange. And when we take this, People are Warmer. very confused. No. No, here. The, the orange red versus the magenta, because they're very confused about the, the warmth. I'm trying to find the right. Do you think you're too good? Okay. Why you consider the orange red the cool? I have to find it. I've read too many comments. Okay. Time. Anytime. Okay, so it. Okay, that's that's a good question. It's very valid. Um, it's just it's just strange, and and it's yeah. it's only because I know better that I'm like uh, okay. So this magenta is much more violety. Okay, this is much more orangey. Orange starts pushing towards green. Okay, that's probably the easiest way to say that. This is still kind of in the red and violet. So if we're going to be using a violety blue and a much warmer red, meaning it's more of an orangey red, this is going to go together better as complements because it's hot. Don't, don't think of these two are making this complement to go with this, okay? These two are making this complement to go with that, okay? So we're, we're basing that on the yellow being closer to the blue which is a green blue, this yellow be kind of going closer towards the red. Does that make sense? It's, it's strange. We need, I, I don't have the color wheel here because remember when we had that color wheel? Mm -hmm. um, if you can find out what episode that is to give them a link, the girls can find that link. Or at the top of all of our shows, we always have a link that goes to our complete list of all the shows that we've had from the dawn of time four years ago. So there are color and color theory episodes 
And if you look in the one that's got them, not chronologically, but that has them where it's, um, where it's by subject, you'll be able to find those color theory episodes. If you didn't see those, go back and watch them before next week because then it will make more sense. We've got a color wheel and we show it kind of the different types of colors with each other um, and kind of what makes each of the different types of color schemes. For now, if it's confusing, we, we don't have as much time to sit and talk about it because this is all supposed to be based on what we already have done um, with the color theory shows. So you're just gonna have to trust me, take my word for it, go back and review those shows. <laughs> And, and I'm sorry that that seems, it's not not meant to be brusque or to kind of, um, it's, it's more meant to expedite the episode. Those episodes go very clearly and very deep in depth, uh, kind of more slowly, don't you feel like, Katie, as to kind of why and what steps and all that. Okay. So, and you notice I had a yellow ochre over here and I've got a um, Van Dyke brown. Those can help tone down these colors because obviously we don't want a painting with this being this dark and these being this bright we're going to tone this down so that they go nicely together because we don't want this to be like a Andy Warhol pop art like really bright screaming hard edges we're trying to make something look more natural but give that effect of of our complementary colors okay so we need a little bit of white just as we need to. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown with this one for now. I don't think I wanna use the yellow ochre. I think that would be better for like when we do green and stuff like that. Okay. So if you can cut to, you've got the ability to cut to the um, this uh, cup instead of me, correct? So I'm gonna probably start with this number four, um, the flat brush. Looks like that, if you've got the set, um, it's just gonna be easier to do. All right, uh, to get some paint down quickly. All right, so um, with this picture that we're gonna be doing, we're not worried about, let me see if I can get that closer to the, area we it'd be nice to get close to these same values we don't have to we could make it much paler in the background we could make it the cup darker anytime you do this it's called artistic license you can kind of do it however you want what our goal our objective is with this specific show is to show complementary colors okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take some of this blue both these are going to be the same for this one i'll um do a different one uh, for the next okay so if you're wanting to do the cool one instead of the warm one I've added just a little bit of that Van Dyke brown and this is hard because I usually hold the end of my brushes really far back and I'm not gonna have that ability to do that today and again do not sweat the drawing I, I don't care if it's stepped on smushy okay just just get something up there you can even draw on the paint if you want. I'm just edging this for what I want my darkest darks to be. I'm kind of finding the, the edge of that cup. If you've chosen the warm one instead, go right ahead and start doing this same thing. Uh, you can get it all the way to the edge if you want, like the down here and stuff and come back in with something lighter. I'm actually using the, um, the Chelsea Classical Studios, um, lavender essence. So you'll notice with this that it's going to dry a little bit because it's going to, um, because it's, uh, lavender dries really fast. Um, and, and this is done on a very kind of thirsty gesso. Um, although it's smooth, it, it's, it's kind of almost like clayboard. It absorbs really nicely. Okay. We, it doesn't matter that this is streaky and smeary and all that. We can come back and we can put something that makes it a little bit more opaque and go over it. All we want to do is have that background 
um, in there for the time being, okay? So that's our cool, that's kind of that more greeny blue. Okay, so in contrast, see how much redder this is? I don't have the brown in with it, but see how this is much more green in those areas? And this is much kind of that brighter blue. When I brown it down a little bit with that Van Dyke, it's gonna temper it some and darken it, but it's still going to have that much more violety undertone. And if this is confusing, these warm and cool colors, you need to get out your paints and paint just with a little blob of paint, paint swatches in no matter what color you have of your blues all together and your yellows all together and your reds all together. And even if you need to cut those little chips out, if you do it on canvas pad, um, if it's uh, an oil or acrylic or you know, even you can just so just some watercolor paper or something like that. Um, do that where you can put them alongside each other and evaluate them against each other once they're dry. That might start making more. Sometimes it takes with, with some people just because they've never thought about it and nobody's really showed it to them. It takes doing something like that where you can kind of mix and match and evaluate it to really see what um, kind of what that theory is to the color. Yes, is there a question, Katie? That sounded mm -hmm. like sounded like a question. I, okay. okay. Working on things behind the scenes. Woohoo! All right. Trying to break through a map. Yes. Well, we are like eight feet away, so. And it's really humid in here, which makes that even harder. Okay, can you guys see the difference now between the, especially in here, between that really more red, reddish blue and the much more greenish blue? Does that make it a little easier to see the contrast, do you think? Okay. So, um, we're going to add a little bit of that white. Now, that is definitely much more green. A little more white. And you can do, again, if you're working on the warm one, you can go ahead and go back in and do that. See how that's kind of a nice, almost like a turquoisey, right? Or a teal, well, not really teal. It's like a grayed teal. Teals are always your greenish blue, right? So, that sometimes that little dash of white when you're playing with color is going to kind of help give you a better look at whether that's a warmer or cool color. And this has a lot more. That Van Dyke Brown is a lot stronger than the Ultramarine because the Ultramarine is not, does not pack that punch that the uh, Thalo does, right? Ultramarine is, is usually transparent or semi-transparent. So, and see, this almost looks more like a, um, like a periwinkle, right? A grade periwinkle, which is kind of more purpley. So that's gonna give you that Kind of doing that little bit of shadow. All right. Oh, somehow I missed that one part. That's unusual. Okay, so does this make a little bit more sense now? Very much more green. Very much more kind of violet-y. 
Yeah, I think it's the reds that's getting everybody. That, that the why reds ones. would be, yeah. why a violet would be yeah. warm. Yeah, well. There's a red, there's a, a cool and a warm if it's, regardless of what the color is, as long as it's warmer looking more, you know, towards the reds, that's going to be warm and vice versa. All right. So now we've got to deal with the orange in here. So we can do one of two things. We can make this cup really white and then come back in with some orange for the highlights. Um, the cup could be orange. I think maybe what I'll do is get a little bit more white out. That's just not tainted with the blue as much. We can start working on some pale oranges. Um, I just wonder if this will pick up that little bit of blue. It might, or we're just gonna have to risk it. Okay, now I can make this anywhere from a much more yellowy orange to a redder orange. As long as it's orange, it's going to be our complement to blue, right? But since this is so green, what we're gonna want to do is maybe make it a little bit more of a yellow orange. Okay. Just gonna pick up a little green from that solvent. Because my solvent was dirty to start with. Just go ahead and kind of scumble this across that hole. This is gonna pick up a little bit of that outside edge if you play along it, so I'm just gonna kind of drag it. lightest here. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white. Now with this you could even put uh, more of your, uh, if you've got a little bit of linseed oil or something like that, instead of your solvent you could be. I'm going to make this a little warmer along here just for some kind of added interest, meaning I'm making more more orange or more red in our orange. Okay, where we've got kind of that darker where it falls back. I'm gonna put that there. a little bit smaller. Now, if, anywhere you get that tealing, you can either leave and just ignore it, or you can take uh, a rag and pull it out if you don't like it. If you like it, I mean, leave it. You could let it dry and paint over it whatever I, I don't mind it i kind of like the little bit of uh picking it up i'm gonna take that and go right along the top now again we we talked about how this isn't a finished artwork we're trying to get a like a temperature feel we're trying to play with the color we're gonna leave that one for a minute we're gonna go over to the warm to see what that contrast is. With this one, I'm adding a little bit more magenta than I did.
switch to a smaller brush. This is getting a little... I'm trying to use that larger brush to just kind of help with time. How, how are we doing time-wise, by the way? About 25 minutes left. Okay, good. Oh. It's a little just like five past seven. Five okay. past six, sorry. Okay. All right, well, if they've got questions while we're doing this, just go ahead and pop, pop in with them. Let's see if I can get this to lay down. Play nice. It's not seeming like it really wants to. Can you guys see the difference in that, though, color-wise so far? Just that's that's a much deeper combination, right? They're still oranges. They still classify as oranges. It's just two very different color plays. Now the magenta is very strong, so even with adding a lot of white, we're really not doing as much to the color as I would like it to be. still very well have to come back and add just some straight white now it, hopefully everybody knows that a compliments across the color wheel right I'm, I'm guessing. They do now. If they if they didn't before, mm -hmm. now they know. Let's see how much redder this is. I'm gonna add just a little here. That's a little bit redder, right? Than that was that we already had. So that's a little hotter of a color. So if you wanted to add a little bit in there just to have a little heat temperature pop, okay, that's going to look like that. That starts cl more closely matching kind of this color over here. And by the same token, if you wanted to really start making this more of a red-orange, and kind of pushing that envelope. You could add a little, some little dippity dots of that make a little more sense see how this gives that illusion of being cooler right are they getting this is this something that's not that's making a little bit more sense this is a little bit warmer go back in and get kind of a nice medium blue if we want and really kind of make that pop a little more. Clean up some of that line.
Are there any questions or people just kind of? They're chatting. They're trying to figure out the the color. Keep explaining your color theory as you do it, I guess. They're trying to. Figure it out. That I always think that if something if something is warm, that means it's gonna be e even a color that's cool, like a blue. I think that's what's up. That. Uh, yeah, that yeah, because there are still cool and warm colors that are you know it can be a cool hot color, it can be a warm cool color. It's this is got. As long as it's more towards that red spectrum, towards violet, that makes it warmer. If the blue is towards that green spectrum, that's going to make it cooler. Okay, It doesn't not make it a blue. It just makes it have a temperature tendency that puts it a different way than the other. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with this straight. And it, sometimes it takes actually doing something like this where you're doing two different ones where you've got the color right with you. Because also keep in mind that, I mean, we can do this all day long, but if you've got a screen that doesn't get the same amount of color, you know, your screen is going to be different than our screen. It's going to be different than somebody else's screen. The proof is in the pudding when you've got the actual color right in front of you, I think. Don't you, Katie? Mm-hmm. It's going to just, it's going to make a lot more sense. But for, especially for these blues, though, you should really be able to see the difference in how they're interacting, sitting right next to each other, as far as one being much more red, which is warm over here, one being much more cool. which is green, okay? Is anybody painting along and trying this? Um, I'm gonna need more white. <laughs> We're gonna need like a giant tube of white. It's not the... Are they still really confused? Are there any other questions that anybody's come up with? Are there... The one that's really throwing them off is that how that magenta is how you're considering the magenta warmer than the cat, I can't remember what the other color is, the cat bread or whatever okay. you have on okay. the other It's, all right, so this is, this is complementary colors. So we're doing orange and we're doing blue. Okay, they're across from each other on the color wheel. We've picked those colors that tend to be warmer to be the complements of each other. So if this is already a warm blue and it's already kind of violet-y, which is more red, okay? Like it's, it's not a red violet, but it's, it's definitely a blue violet, which means it's a warmer blue. I'm gonna want to go with a red that's still closer to that. If this is a violet-y blue, I want to go with a more violet-y red. Does that make sense? because those are gonna look really nice together. They're closer to each other on the color wheel. 
So with the yellows, I'm gonna wanna go with a yellow that's closer to that violet than something that's very green. Let's, in fact, let's, really quick, let's show what happens when we mix, if we do the, um, the yellows with the wrong red, or not wrong red, but just with the, um, I might have to mix it and then hold it up over it just so we don't get this in the, all right, so here's my very green yellow, okay? Here is my magenta. See how that does not look, I mean, it looks like orange on that screen. To me, it does not look like orange. It looks like a really weird geranium red to me in person. That's kind of what it's pulling. Okay. Um, yeah, that monitor's kind of, let me clean this out. And then we're going to do the other two together so that you can see that those look way too similar. Like, that the brush didn't clean. And this, this is good. This is why I'm asking for these types of questions because if it doesn't make sense, yeah. I, I need to show them so it makes sense. Okay, so here's more of that sunshiny yellow that we wanted to use with that. And then remember, this red's really powerful, so we're not going to put a lot with it. So that makes an orange. But these two, I think, play much nicer with that than those two would play with it. Does that make any sense? I mean, this is a nice color on its own. It's almost like a tangerine. But I don't. I think a tangerine doesn't bring out, it doesn't give that same feeling. And it's not that you can't use these. As long as it's the complement, that's fine. Sometimes though you'll use complements and you're like, I'm not sure why this looks weird. And because you don't know color temperature, it, it's just gonna look weird, okay? So sometimes that's what it is. I mean, that, I'm ask if that permanent red is less pigmented than the magenta red primary. It's, it's, I don't think it's, it's, it's not the difference of that. I think it's um, a little bit more of an opaque red. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, something that's more transparent is not going to be as strong when you mix it with something that's more opaque, which a cadmium yellow, it, cadmiums are incredibly opaque, all right? So we're using a transparent color here and an opaque color. So that's what makes kind of that more solid orange. The lemon yellow isn't so much opaque as it's just very highly staining. And then this red is more, it's not opaque, but it's more opaque than the um, primary red magenta is. Okay, so this is transparent, then this is somewhat more opaque. So that's gonna have that higher strength to it. Plus some colors are really just staining, you know, reds stain brushes, right? Some of the blues stain brushes. It just has to do with, um, besides, besides opacity and transparency and the nuances between them, there's also staining properties of pigments, which is when we've talked about pigments, that's why I tell you guys that, because that will have as much to do sometimes with, um, with color mixing as, as anything will if you're mixing it with, with other, you know, transparents that don't have the staining properties, it's gonna be overpowered really easily. So I do still have some people that have questions, but a lot of them seem to be specific. So I think just a good time to remind them that you will go back and answer yes. questions too. So like if there's specific ones that... Yes, if there's something specific that's yeah. just like where it's not uh, as easy to like this type of a thing. Is it just like longer ones where it's like... Some are longer, some are, I think, specific colors. Somebody was asking another color. Um, Marianne just said, so it's not that the left red is cool and the right red is warm, but that the left red and blue both have more yellow and the right red and blue have less yellow. 
I'm upside down, so I don't know which okay. is which. All right, so, so say that one more time, because I, I, I think so, that... It's not that the left red is cool, so be... This one. Yes. Okay. And that the right red is warm, but that the left red and blue both have more yellow, and the right red and blue have less yellow. Yes. Have, have more violet, yes. Okay. Yes. These these have more yellow, which is more green, right? Gonna leans more towards yeah. that base. This has warms, which lean more towards violets. Okay, the yellow yellow unfortunately this kind of got strung along. It's just a hotter yellow, so it's going towards that because those will mix a little bit more cleanly together. If you take a really green green, like we just showed, and then you put it with a um, with a very violety violety red that's what you get for orange which is does not look like orange it looks like a, a weird pink yeah i think too people are comparing them to each other yes and you can't and that's not what you're no 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 doing. i'm looking for the best uh, yeah don't compare them to each other okay. compare them to the best match for the colors that you are wanting to use okay it doesn't have to do with and, and maybe this is why it was not good to do them side by side. I wanted side by side so you could see the color temperature difference, mm -hmm. but I think that just became more confusing. Um, it's it's what is the best match for that that's going to provide kind of that truest feel to it um, towards it being just warmer in and of itself. If you had to, okay, so this sounds stupid, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because I'm, I'm known for that. Um, if you're looking at these two things, and I, and I tell you, one of them has tea and one of them has coffee, which one would you say has the coffee? I'm just going for color psychology right now. I'm letting them answer. Okay. Which one has the coffee? Yes. And I think I think probably three quarters of the time that's what people are going to say. I think we're starting to Okay. So think of it in terms of things like that. Okay, now why is that? Because people think of tea as as um, healthier, which normally makes people think of greens, okay, and, and earth tones, right? which something that's a green or blue is going to point more towards that, especially a kind of more kind of uh, greeny green or greeny yellow, that's gonna have more of that effect to it. So it's not just, it's sometimes it's the psychology. It might not be the, uh, the colors you would first think of putting together. It's the psychology that's putting those colors together in your work that's going to pay off when you're trying to get people to feel a certain way about your work. Art isn't just about making pretty pictures. And that's kind of an amateurish way that sometimes I think people approach art. Art can be more than that. Art, art can give, you know, if, if you've ever been to a museum and a certain piece, maybe you hated it and you had no idea why. Just when you looked at it, it just evoked this horrible, just visceral, disgust and you didn't know what whether it's whether you know you might not know why whether you just there's just something about it that you're just like god this is just you know i just i hate it it just makes me not feel makes me sick to my stomach i don't know what the deal is with that go back if you know where that's at or you can find a picture of it online now that you know a little bit more about some color temperature go back into that with just some fresh thought what is it that you don't like about it? What is it now that you think about it looking at the colors? Are those colors, do you think, making you feel a certain way? I guarantee you, when you see stuff, you're like, ugh, that's why. You know? I think, I think the best, okay, so... In, in my lifetime, or just things I've seen in museums, the best example I have of this is in the Chicago 
Museum of Art. Um, I, I, somebody, and I'm not even going to name names, I think I remember who it was, but I, I, I will protect the innocence of it, in, in that they wanted to go look at suits of armor. Here we were on like a four hour drive uh, to go to this museum, and then they wanted to look at armor when you know, there's a Surratt in the, you know, Sunday in the Park with George is in the next room and just all these, you know, masterpieces you've only ever seen in books because you're, you know, a student and, you know, never been to Chicago and, and all that stuff. And uh, they wanted to go look at armor. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And I am famous for getting lost in museums. So I didn't want to be lost. So I said I would go, but we needed to like hustle it along. In this side hall that you have to go down, to go towards the antiquities had this amazing stained glass window and it it just uh the light was streaming through it and it was all these just beautiful the warm blues and the warm uh, reds and just the beauty in this in the stained glass window I just wanted to sit there in the window and curl up in just this blue glow that was coming. It looked like it was this healing, beautiful, relaxing, just amazing light. And it was a Marc Chagall and I freaking hate Marc Chagall. <laughs> I don't like the weird little floating animal characters or the this or the that. It just, it irritates me on beyond belief because I, I agree that they're kind of mystical and childlike. And I do like the, some of the colors, but the paintings just, the glass, the feel that that glass had was just, it was, it, it's probably one of my favorite pieces in the whole world and it's not a painting or a sculpture. Um, but just the color in it the just the raw strength of kind of emotional like it gripped you and you just didn't want to leave it and i believe i made them go on to look at armor thankfully and i stayed there and just absorbed kind of like the beautiful energy of this window so that's the power of something that otherwise that i i just really don't like that artist at all um i think the only person that i it's like more than that's Renoir and that's because everything looks like frosting but that's a talk for another day but that gives you an idea of the power of what color can have so go back and look at paintings that you've not liked before or artworks that were color that you've not liked before with a fresh eye and see if that doesn't have that it didn't make you feel a certain way psychologically because of those color choices um, and I think that will help you learn more about color temperature and color theory than just something like this where maybe um, the concepts are, are somewhat abstract um, by comparison. Do, what, how much more time do we have? Just a couple minutes maybe. Okay. 6.30. All right. So, so this is what we're going to do um, for next week. We will do um, a, uh, and, may, and maybe I'll get something like a bottle. I couldn't find a really good bottle picture, so I may get a bottle and take a picture because it wasn't really, I don't like like the cast light and stuff on this and I don't feel like it's as kind of, it's a little in your face. So if you're not a member of the Jerry's Live group and you've got Facebook, um, go to groups, search for Jerry's Live. I will post pictures in that. Um, I will, uh, for, for next week, just so we have something maybe a little bit different. Um, and we'll do two like this. Um, I think we'll do them vertical. I think it's just a, a little nicer. This is a little cramped. Um, but we'll do, um, a, uh, violet and yellow and we'll do, um, the cool and the warm again. And then we'll do, um, the red and green as well. Okay, so you can really see, especially with the green, I think you're going to see a big difference. And we can talk about knocking the color back. I didn't knock the color back very much today because I thought it was more important for you guys to really um, see the blue vibrancy because I think that shows the cool and warm a little bit better. Um, but, um, but we'll try to be a little more nuanced next week. 
now they want to see you switch them. Now they want to see a warm cup on a cool background and a cool, cool cup on a warm background. <laughs> so, okay. So, so to, so rather, so have the oranges in the background and the blue no, in the they foreground. they want to see, like, in, so, like, instead of having all the warms on one canvas, they want to see the, the way that the warm and the cool play against each other. But... Well, get through this first. Okay? I mean, for for that one, where did I put them? Ah, it's under solvent. Okay, so this is this is a good example of. You, can you turn it above, uh -huh. real quick? <laughs> There's solvent on this. Okay, so this is a good example of. This this is uh, the complementary with red and green, right? But see how that changes the dynamic a lot with kind of a more grayed out green and the red and then this being the bolder brighter with kind of the other red taking a little bit of a you don't necessarily look at these and think right off the bat of them as this may one maybe but I don't feel like this one really hits you as a complementary color right unless you're really thinking about it do you Katie it's more subtle mm -hmm. And what that is, is it's just the colors knocked off a little bit with some yellow ochre to, yeah. to tone it down so that it doesn't have this in your face, yeah. you know, look for it a little bit harder. To yes. It. And it makes it warmer. It makes that green a lot warmer. See how that doesn't almost even register as green. It's almost like a kind of a grade celadon or something, which is a little bit warmer. And then this is, hmm, it's what? That's you get out your little thing and you yes. the color and you go, oh, right, right. Exactly. So uh, that's we'll do. I've I've got this bottle, um, and I'll just take a picture of it. It's a brown bottle, but we'll just use that as a picture. I think it's over there somewhere. I think it's on the shelf somewhere. Um, I might have taken it home for a vase, but but we'll just do that. But I'll put the pictures in. Um, I'll try to actually put them in Sunday, so that it's it's in advance for people to get. Um, and if you join the Jerry's live group, you have to answer the question so that you get into the group. Without the question being answered, the moderators don't even get the chance right. to approve you. They don't know that you're even there. So you'll just be waiting, um, which, uh, you know, doesn't help anybody. And it's a great community. I highly recommend it. Um, if you paint it along with us and you want to share, um, go to the group and you can post. Use hashtag JL171. So you have to use that little kind of pound symbol, JL171. And then people can, because sometimes it gets, if you don't pay attention to the order where you can actually order it, so it's so it's most recent posts down, sometimes you'll get something that's four days old and then something that's 20 minutes there. And so it becomes confusing to find things, especially like when I posted the picture last night, I couldn't find it because it had it scrambled weirdly. So, um, but then somebody can just search the hashtag with the show number and everything everybody did, if they tagged it, comes up. So um, so we're trying to do that with each episode where there's a paint along so that people can kind of see what everybody's doing, everybody's take on it. Okay, and and don't, if, if this seemed confusing as all get out, don't fret. Color theory is one of the hardest, it's, it's a semester long class, color and composition is a semester long class and you're not just learning for half of that composition and for half of that color. Typically you're, they're throwing both of it at you at the same time so that you're learning equal amounts together. Um, it, and it's a very difficult class for some people to wrap their heads around and not everybody sees color the, the same. same. Some people have way more rods than cones. So some people are really way more like this being values they get that and they can get it perfectly they can like knock it out to to you know three percent of what that value is just by looking at it other people cannot other people can't tell a saturated color from a grayed down color it just looks like a value so so that could be the problem as to why you're having you're not you might not be catching this so it's it's not a life or death like people that think situation. 2D or 3D, it just, yes. Work different. Yes, it's not a life or death situation, but the more you expose yourself to it, the more kind of, you know, we, you you'll get it. In Facebook, I said, Marcia said, she's been told you're always learning color. Yes, I you should be. That more. Yes. And then, 
Rochelle said the best way to learn it is to experiment, experiment, experiment. Do tons Keep. and tons of color mixing and swatches. And yes. Very true. Could not agree more. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> so, all right. Well, so next week, I'm not going to say don't bring your A game, but you probably need to bring your A game because we're going to try to very quickly in 30 minutes each, like jump right in and start out and, and try to get this where we've, you know, even if, if you know, if you've got a good idea of what your warm and cool colors are, you can go ahead and get that palette set up for yourself. Go ahead and get that drawing on your uh, panel or your canvas or your paper, whatever you're doing, just have it ready to go. And we're going to jump right into it. Okay. And I probably won't do this mixy mix thing like I did at the beginning, just to kind of, to help you out because we're going to want to try to, to get two, uh, you know, me to get two of each and you to get one of it just done. Um, so that will be next week challenge and the beauty of this is even if you want to watch it this time you can go back and watch it as many th I live here forever <laughs> which is terrifying um, small children cry no but but you can rewatch this multiple times and break it into pieces if this gets really overwhelming break it into pieces go and do one with cool colors go and do one with warm colors make it easier on yourself Learning is always learning, regardless of how fast or slow you do it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with taking time to get it right. Okay? So, I will leave you with that. You guys have a good week. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.